The year was 2013 and I was about halfway through college and all I wanted to do was be a professional guitarist. And to me, part of being a pro guitarist was having pro level gear, specifically an incredible tube amp. Up until this point, I had been rocking my Vox AC4 TV, which is an all tube amp, but it's maybe just like a touch thin. <laughs> step it up and I wanted to do it right so I wasn't gonna just go grab an AC-15 and call it a day. Now if I had done that I would have been perfectly fine because the AC-15 is a great amp. But at the time I was really involved playing guitar at church and all the guys there were using Morgan amps which if you don't know is a boutique amp manufacturer who makes some pretty insane sounding amplifiers. The guys I was playing with were all pros and they had great tones so I decided that I too must have a boutique amplifier. In addition to being a boutique amp I had two requirements. Number one one, the amp must come as a head and cab version because that's just so much cooler. And number two, it must come from the AC style amp family. Quick note on the head and cab thing. I'm actually super grateful I went this route for reasons we'll discuss later in the video. Now, here's the thing you need to know about me. At the time, I must've just had like a little hipster heart because I never wanted to do what the exact trend was. Don't get me wrong, I wanted to be on trend, but slightly off the path from what was popular. Kids were wearing Osiris shoes, so I wore Vans. Kids were wearing American Eagle, so I wore American Rag. And the same was true here. because. The the guitars were using Morgan amps, I needed to do something similar, but different. One day I was perusing the internet, looking up some of my favorite band's rigs, and I discovered something interesting. John Foreman from my favorite band Switchfoot was using an amp that I had never heard of called an MX-11. Since my musical hero was using the amp, I knew it had to be good, so I dove into research and discovered that a bunch of artists in the contemporary Christian genre were also using the amps. I dove in a little further and found out that the MX-11 was an AC style amp, and I'm like, this is it. All the videos I found on the amp sounded incredible and of course they were winning awards from Premier Guitar and other outlets, so I was pretty sold. I placed an order and then I waited. Now let me tell you, this is not like when you order an amp from Sweetwater and it takes five to seven days to get here. No, this was a small company that was hand building the amps, so the lead time was nearly six months. So the wait felt like centuries. I would refresh my email 20 times a day, just hoping to get that, we've started working on your amp notification. I scrolled through their Instagram constantly because they were posting pictures of orders and I'd be like oh I think maybe that one's my amp and oh maybe that one is my amp and you know it was never my amp. Days turned into weeks and into months. There was a moment where I was seriously considering canceling my order and just getting a Morgan because it felt like my amp was never gonna come. But thankfully my patience prevailed and the amp finally arrived. <laughs> This is my MX-11 VS-15. It's one of the best looking amps I've ever seen. I chose a fawn finish for the Tolex. It's got an Alnico blue speaker in it and you gotta check this out. Embarrassingly, I was pretty convinced that the color knob was a tone knob because many British style amps do have some sort of tone knob. I was so convinced that it was making a difference that I asserted with authority that the blue setting sounded the best. Then I did some reading and found out that the only thing it was changing was the color of the LED and that I'm an idiot. But to this day, that's why I still leave it in the blue setting. And real quick, if you're enjoying the story, the video, or the channel as a whole, it would mean a lot to me if you click the like button and subscribe to the channel. It's one of the best ways to help a smaller channel like mine do a little better with the YouTube algorithm, which as I'm sure you can guess is rather challenging at times. I'm super encouraged by how many of you have commented that you feel like the videos are very high quality for the amount of subscribers I do have on this channel. That's always the goal. Huge thank you to everyone who is liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting. All those things really do help the channel to grow and we are growing, which is super cool. All right. 
Back to amp stuff. I did my first two tours ever with the amp. I brought it on my first tour and it sadly broke on the third show from just normal wear and tear on the road. Then on my second tour, they weren't able to transport it from the West Coast to the East Coast, but you know my shtick with amps. That's not why we're here. But one of my favorite things about this amp is that nobody really knows what it is and nobody seems to have one because the company did sadly end up closing. The amp is so unique that it's become a pretty fun conversation piece when it does come up. Guitarists are always like, oh, what's that? Never seen that before. I have such fond memories of my first few years with the amp, playing gigs and at church. People would always come up to me and ask me about it and give me compliments on it. I loved being the MX guy. <laughs> I don't really gig with amps anymore. The MX-11 has found new life in my rig through the Tunos Torpedo Captor and the Quad Cortex. And this is why I'm so grateful I did end up getting a head in a cab. Having the head has allowed me to easily capture it and pair it with different cabs and IRs to really expand the tonal capabilities. I've actually got a capture of this amp in my JM Worship preset that I think sounds awesome. <laughs> run my MX through the captor so that I can utilize it in the QC and a hybrid setup. It allows me to use all the effects and the flexible routing of the quad cortex while still getting that analog tone from a real tube amp. <laughs> This is awesome for recording, production, or jamming at home with crank tube amp tones without upsetting all your neighbors. Turn that crap off! I'm really grateful to have this amp and I'm very grateful I didn't cancel my order. And now it's kind of like a collector's item, sort of. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. About 87% of my views are from unsubscribe watchers, so if you fall in that category, it would really mean a lot to me if you hit the subscribe button. And you know I love hearing from you, so comment down below if you'd also like to have an amp that no one's heard of, or if you like one of the mainstays, and I'll catch you next time. You gotta check this out. Ugh. It's not plugged in.